Hey guys, um, so for those of you who are still struggling a bit with making graphs in Excel, um, we wanted to provide an extra resource for you to help you um, not only with your homework for this week, but um, for making graphs in all classes in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through how to make a, uh, a column graph and a scatter plot in Excel using the same examples that I did for my discussion sections. Um, and again, hopefully this will help you guys as you're preparing your graphs for your homework this week. Um, so the example that I'm going to use is uh, for the column graph is comparing height between males and females. So the first thing we, ne we need to do, is we see that males and females are scattered throughout our list here. So to prevent us from having to manually cut and paste each each cell to make a new column for males and females, uh, the easiest thing to do is to click on this entire column. Um, and for me, if I go to data, I can then sort this column uh, alphabetically. And again, I'm using I'm using Excel version 2010 uh, for PCs. This button may be in a different spot if you're using a different version of Excel for PC. Or if you're using a Mac, but this button is available somewhere, and it should—it's uh, a simple search through all your toolbars and tabs. You should be able to find the sort button. So for me, I just click this button here that says sort A to Z, uh, and I have this option here whether I want to expand the selection or continue with the current selection. Um, if I expand the selection, um, all the rows will remain congruent, so that each subject's data remains in the same row. If I continue with the current selection, uh, what will happen is it will only sort that column and all the other columns will remain unsorted, meaning that the rows will no longer be congruent for each uh, person that participated in the survey. So we want to click the button that says expand the selection, press sort. Now we have all our females at the top and all our males at the bottom. So for me, I think the easiest thing to do is to create a new sheet and then copy over First, all the females. And then in a second column, copy over all the males. And let's label these columns now. This will be important for the future. We're going to label it females and males. All right, and what we actually want to graph for both of these columns is the mean. So I'm going to type in mean down here. And if you remember from last week, the function of mean is equals average. We can select data we want to average. And then instead of typing that in again, we can simply find this box at the bottom of our cell. You highlight over that box, you'll get a plus sign, and that'll drag that formula over to the next column. Uh, and even though we do have some blank cells now, that's not a problem. Excel will just discard um, those cells when it's calculating the mean. So we still get the correct value here. So we have the mean height now for females and males, and now we want to insert a graph. Um, what you can do and this works for simple graphs like this, is if you go to insert, you highlight the data that you want to graph, insert a column graph. The data that you want to graph will generally appear as you want, but when you get to more complicated graphs, if you have multiple groups, um, sometimes the way you want your graph to appear is not how it's going to default. So instead, what I'm going to do is walk you through how to make this graph from scratch. So if I don't highlight any columns of data, I'm going to go to insert column, insert this column graph. We get a blank graph that appears. In order to select our data, I'm going to right click within our graph and click this option here that says select data. And from here, I know the screen looks different, especially for a Mac versus PC, but there should be an option here to add a series, which is what we want to do. And we just want to add one series. That should be okay. 
And then here where it says series values, so don't worry about series name or series values, you can click on this red and blue button, highlight the means that you want to graph, press the button again, and now we have a graph with the means for both females and males. Press OK. And the second thing we want to change is right now we only have a 1 and a 2 underneath our bars. And we want to label this females and males. So then we can uh, change our axis labels. And again, for both Mac and PC, there should be some option that looks something like this to edit your axis labels. Uh, so we can press Edit. This red and blue button again. And then since we typed in females and males at the top, we can actually just highlight these two cells. Press the button again, press OK, press OK. And then if we go down to our graph, we now have the bars labeled as females and males. We can delete series one, that's not important. Um, if you want, you also don't really need these horizontal bars. So you can click on the bars, press backspace, and get rid of those. And now what we need to add are our axis labels and a figure caption. Um, so for me, I go up here to Chart Tools. Uh, I go to Layout. And I have an ac option here that says Axis Titles. And again, this may be in a different spot depending on your version, but there still should be an option to add an axis title somewhere. Um, so I'm going to first by start by adding a horizontal axis title. Um, click on Title Below Axis. And then our x-axis title is going to be sex. Uh, and again, it's sex, not gender, because um, we're speaking about the biological sex, not the gender that someone identifies with. So sex is the correct x-axis uh, variable. So we label our x-axis. Now let's label our y-axis. So again, we go to axis titles, uh, primary vertical axis title, rotated title. And here we can type in height. And make sure you put in the units in parentheses. In this case, the units are inches. So now we have our y-axis title and our y-axis label and x-axis label. Uh, and lastly, uh, we need to add in our figure caption. Remember, no titles for human physiology, but we do need a figure caption. So there are a couple different ways you can add in a figure caption. You could just take this graph, insert it into Word, and add in a text box underneath your graph. That works just fine. Um, but the other thing that you can do is to add your figure caption directly on your graph. And the way I'm going to do that is to actually insert a chart title. And again, we don't want a chart title, but you're able to move this text box down. I can reformat my graph. Make this a smaller font, size 10. And then I can simply type in my figure caption in this box here. So we can type in figure 1, the effect of sex on height. And oops, we can center that at the bottom. And now we have a pretty good looking graph. Um, for the homework, you then need to insert this into a Word document. So you can simply right click on the graph, press copy, and then in our Word document, right click, and we have several paste options here. What I recommend is inserting it as a picture file, which for me is the furthest to the right. Um, that way when you're trying to, if you need to resize your, uh, your graph, sometimes if you uh, embed the, the graph from the Excel file, the, the size of the text or the bars get distorted. So if you insert it as a picture file, then all the scaling will remain uh, as you want. And right now I can't really move it around. In order to be able to move the graph around, you want to right click on this, click on this wrap text option, and really any other option should be okay. So if I press square, I can then move around the graph and format it where I want to in my Word document. And um, that is how you make a bar graph and insert it into Word. So that is part one of your homework. Um, part two is to make a scatter plot. So for this, let's go back to this main page. We don't need to worry about separating into males and females here. We just need two um, columns of data. So the example that I'm going to use here 
is the correlation between uh, height and weight. So I'm going to copy those two columns over to a new sheet. And then again, you can probably get away with highlighting the data, pressing insert, scatter, and it's going to appear almost as you want. Um, but again, in some more complicated cases, this isn't going to work. So I'm going to quickly walk you through how to make a scatter plot from scratch. So same thing, insert. This time I'm going to go to scatter and insert a scatter with only markers. I'm going to right click within the graph. Press select data. Again, I'm going to add a series. And then I just need to select my x and y variables. So for x, I'm going to select height. And sometimes it screws up if you select the, uh, the first cell that actually says height. So I'm not going to select that. I can select the y. Press OK. And we don't need to worry about the horizontal axis labels here, so we can just press OK. Um, we can, again, delete Series 1. We don't need that. We can delete these horizontal lines. Just click on them, press Backspace. We don't need them. The one thing we do want to change is you can see all the data is really clumped together, and there's a bunch of white space here. So what we can do is change our um, axis minimum and maximum so that it better fits our graph. So you can click on your axes. Uh, left click and then right click and then press this option here that says format axis and then you can change your minimum and maximum um, for your axis. So you can change the minimum um, to be let's say we can start at around 50 and then that already looks better we can do the exact same thing though with our y axis I think anyone weighs less than 100 pounds. Actually, it's getting a little bit close, so maybe you want to go with. Let's go with 90, so it's not right at the bottom. All right, and then the same thing as before. So we just need to insert our axis titles. So again, axis titles um, under chart tools layout, primary horizontal axis title, title below axis. Uh, and in this case, both our axes need units. So we have height in inches. And we have uh, for vertical, primary vertical, rotated. We have weights in pounds. And then same thing as before, we can add a chart title, drag the chart title down, scrunch our graph up a bit, change the font size to 10, and then since this is our second figure, we can do figure 2. We don't want to use the word effect here because there's not a cause and effect relationship, so instead I'm going to use the word relationship, the relationship between heights and weights. Center that at the bottom. And then again we can right click, copy, go over to Word, paste as a picture, Change the wrapping and drag it down to where we want it. And again, that is your homework. Um, two bar graphs um, and two scatter plots. Um, and for my classes, for JJ's classes, uh, do not use the examples. I don't know which, what the other GTFs did, but do not use the examples that I just did. So do not do. Um, uh, do not do females versus males for heights, and do not do a scatter plot for height and weight, but any other combination of variables are okay. Alright guys, I hope this helps, and I will see you in class this week.